dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Pathfinder, the adventure card game. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Today is the fifth, and we're taking a look at Pathfinder, the adventure card game. That's right, and this is the newest installation of the Pathfinder. Yeah, of the Pathfinder universe. Uh, just came out this year. The full title is Pathfinder, the adventure card game, uh, Rise of the Rune Lords, yeah. which is an exceedingly it's, long it's title. It's a, a big box, but they really kind of planned it out. They put uh, spots in here for the actual boxes that new adventures will come in. I don't know if that's really, you need that because... I, it's still cool though because I do have a lot of boxes that it's like, I don't really want to throw them out because they have artwork and they're part of the game, but I don't want to keep them because they take up so much space. Right. This kind of solves that without making it too much bigger, but they all get shuffled in anyway, so these boxes are empty. I've got one expansion and then one that came with it anyway. But still, and, and the box feels a little cheap in some ways, but then I don't think it is. Hmm. I just, for some reason, it's, I guess maybe I wish it had like a linen texture or something. Oh, I, I see what you're I saying, yeah. I don't know. Taking it, taking the cover off, I feel like I'm going to rip the cover or something, but it's still, it's a great box and they really thought forward, you know, thought ahead, so right. I appreciate that. Anyway, go ahead. Um, so basically what you have is you have, so that, uh, that you're playing with, you have scenarios, uh, you have uh, adventures um, that you have to do. And you have your character. So let's start with the characters because that's well, kind of what I'm sorry. If ahead. you're not familiar with Pathfinder, it's an RPG. Yes. I mean, I'm, I assume you would be. That's probably why you didn't even think to talk about it. But yeah, Pathfinder is it, like Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it's a large scale uh, uh, RPG system that has you know lots of lore and many books, and you know lots of people love it. So this is kind of the card version. So we're going to talk about how it probably appeals to the RPG fan, and then how it appeals to the you know the card gamer fan. Right. So anyway, go ahead. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is decide on a character. Um, characters uh, each have unique powers. This is my, my uh, uh, token card, which kind of just, it has a little backstory on the back and, and, ex and show a picture of this, which we'll use to show where uh, I'm at, and these are our locations for the game. I apologize if any green screen, I can't really, he, oh. he insists on doing this a lot. So yes, I, I do, I'm sorry. sorry. So, so this is my character right here, I'll try and keep it level. Um, and I chose uh, Linny, the female druid, uh, gnome druid I should say, female gnome druid. And this is her ability card, this is kind of where we track uh, how things go. And we have her in these sleeves because when we reach a certain point in the game, um, there'll be feats that we can unlock, in which case we would mark uh, the feats that we have. So you take a magic marker or a dry erase if you don't want to do that, but I, we tend to notice that dry erase kind of rubs off too easily, so you'll forget what you had. So just take a magic marker. These, these sleeves are fairly cheap, so if you want to start over, you can just take the card out and put, put a new one in. And then you're going to create your deck based on uh, what it says on the back or front. I don't know how to yeah, look so, at that. So all the RPG-ness is kind of boiled down to this one card in the beginning. And then you get a second card as well. You right. can you can choose like I I have a Miri right. She's my character right now. So I, eventually I will be able to choose whether I'm a berserker or a juggernaut. So they have different focuses or whatever. Right. And it's the same sort of thing as RPGs. Like you will choose what to level up when you get one level. You choose what you do, and uh, the hand size will be increased a little bit. And that's important because that is your life, basically. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's real nice though that they they break apart. You know, what goes in your hand. So, uh, Amiri is allowed to have five weapons. She gets no spells because she's not proficient in spells. She gets two armor, two items, two allies, and four blessings at the beginning. So, until I level up, that's what I have to have right, in my Right, the basic deck. cards. Right. Well, the basic cards and then whatever you get through, right. you know, exploring. But yes, that, that is my set. You know, like, I can't have six weapons. I have to stay with five for now. Right. So until I, you start I really, exploring. I enjoy that. But I can have any weapon that I come across that right. I'm able to pick up or whatever. So for the most part, you're going to have a deck of 15 cards based on what your character can have, but that will increase as you play, um, you know, through the level. But once the once the adventure or once the scenario is over, you have to go back to as however many cards you're allowed to have in your hand. Uh, hand sizes can level up based on what you unlock. Um, so once you have your character and once you have the cards that you chose, the basic cards, um, if you're just starting the game, uh, then you would go into uh, building the. Uh, uh, location decks. Now each location also has what's in the deck. For example, the woods here has uh, four monsters, two barriers, one weapon, no spells, no armor, 
two items, no allies, and no blessings. It also has a special uh, ability right. for the location. If uh, undefeated monsters other than Velen or Henchmen are banished. So in the woods, if you're unable, uh, they don't get shuffled back in the deck, which normally they would. Yep. So it's different per one, so you really have to kind of counter that in. And then they have a closing cost. Right. And... Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but, well, you were bringing up the closing cost. Right. The closing cost has to do with um, you close the location so that the villain doesn't escape. Um, and that's really what you're trying to do is corner it. Now, there is one villain and four henchmen. and these get Well, for a two-player game. For a two-player game. Um, and these get shuffled in uh, and just ran, uh, uh, randomized and then placed in any one of the piles, and then the piles get shuffled um, as, as such. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to each location, go through the deck, uh, as quickly as possible because you don't want want the Blessings deck to run out, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, so you're just going to want to go in, find the henchmen, kill the henchmen, um, or you know defeat the henchmen so that you can close the location, and then once the location is closed, once you have three closed locations, uh, you, go get, you go after the villain, and then the villain has nowhere else to go. If you go after the villain when there are open locations, the villain has a chance of escaping by shuffling himself and a, and a Blessing, into the deck, you know, randomize them and then yeah. place them in the deck. Yeah, you take one blessing for every open location, uh, minus one for the villain, shuffle them all up, put them in the open location so you don't know exactly where the villain right. is. Right, so, and then it's a search all over again. Yeah, so you want to close locations, but yes, it is a fine line because you want to pick up the weapon. Like me, I, I always like, dude, I want that weapon, there's one weapon in there, and then inevitably I decide to close the location because of pressure, peer pressure. And uh, it happens to be the next card would have been my awesome, you know, halberd or something. Yeah. And it's just like, son of a bitch. But um, this this game is not easy, especially with two people as far as, like, timing it right. And you're going to get to the blessings. This right. is our official timer. Um, so you flip over a card for each turn, the beginning of each turn. On his turn, then my turn. Yeah, so of each turn. And uh, it, it gives you an ability that you can copy. If you have like a Blessings of the God card, you can actually copy this Blessings. Otherwise, it just serves as that timer. So it does actually add something more than simply just a timer. So that's nice. Um, sometimes the stars align and it's all perfect and, and away you go. Um, but yes, there, there's that fine line between finding the villain and closing the location so you can defeat the villain and then accomplish the scenario. Which, in this case, if you defeat the scenario, uh, each character gains a skill feat. Oh, that's, no, that's adventure, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's the adventure. The, the scenario, um, each character draws a random item from the item box. So, this one's not the best, you know, uh, reward. So, I would, I would rather go and loot before accomplishing this. Because, really, you can redo a scenario until you are able to succeed, and then you can move on. So, it depends on whether you're doing... Uh, you know, an adventure path. Uh, but the idea is that, just like an RPG, when your character dies, they stay dead. So you need to make sure that you're not pushing it too hard. You can go and loot, and then back off and try again later. Um, or you can you know, go all out, try to get the villain, and you may end up dead if you're not careful. Yep. If, if you have to draw a card from your 15-card deck, that's where it starts, anyway. When, if you have to draw a card and you can't, you're dead. So let's say that... You know, it made me get rid of all my cards. This is my discard pile now, and I have to draw cards, and I only have two cards. My hand limit is four, so there's two I can't draw. I'm dead. Yep. And that's that's it. You're supposed to not ever use that character again, or at least, you know, you have to go back to the basic hand. Right, the best, basic deck. Yeah, and, and the basic deck, they have suggested decks, which I there's no problem with starting with those suggested hand you know, decks, because I think they are tailored to the characters pretty nicely but you can also switch out any basic uh, at any time right uh to do that uh, uh to build your own deck if you want to modify it. i like, chose to add in another cure yeah because um, cures are really important for him right um and and that's something interesting that uh you brought up was hand size um his hand size is four but he can upgrade to like six but mine is a static i believe mine is a static five i will always only have five cards in my hand at a time um, and I'm I'm a brute, so I have lots of weapons and shields, but no spells, right. no you know, very little items, that sort of thing. So we definitely have a different play style, and so they don't always you know jive together really well, but sometimes they really do, especially if he goes first and I can pick up the slack, you know, if there's a, a henchman he wasn't able to beat or whatever. But he's you know, uh, right away you you're figuring out that oh gee, I just use this spell card, I get all my cards back, so I can kick ass if I need to, right. kind of thing. So. It all does kind of work well. Yeah, at first I didn't think it was terribly balanced, but I didn't really understand my character and how she should be played. But now I think I have a good handle on her, especially with her powers. Yeah, you hardly ever need help. So. Yeah. 
and and the only time I ever need help if it's like, oh gee, I need to have a you know a magic or a, a, a I'm not very smart, so it needs an intelligence check or something. My yeah. character's not. Very smart. Mine mine has divine wisdom. And so. actually, hers is not terribly smart. Yeah, his yeah. is not terribly yeah. smart. Well, her ability, yeah, she's not terribly intelligent. She doesn't have really great knowledge. But anyway, um, well, her knowledge is okay. so instead of like going through all the the you know the particulars, I think we should really talk about kind of the quality of the game and what we like about it. Okay. Um, there are reviews of this game you can actually see a playthrough on crits happen so so we'll leave that to him uh i have a lot of fun with this game i like it when i first saw it i wasn't a huge fan of the graphic presentation of it yeah it is a bit sparse because well, it's very rpg though and it's also very i say windows because i think it's very analytical uh, you know it, there's only a little bit of artwork and then the rest is just text but having said that it is so well placed, and I've ne you, you have very little question to what you're supposed to do right now, and right. depending on the card. So it really works very well. Um, I also had concern about the quality of the cards because you can feel a kind of edge here, and um, they're they're very thin, and they're not ones that you can necessarily bend back to back. That was a big deal for creating my own games. I wanted to make sure they were like poker, you know, style kind of whatever. Having said that, they shuffle really well. Yep. So I'm happy with that. Um, and besides the kind of the graphicness of it, the artwork is beautiful. It's pretty cool. And, um, yeah, I enjoy it. I wish there were more characters, but I'm sure we're going to get more. Yeah. Um, expansions. And I enjoy the difference between characters. Um, what do you think as far as how it relates to people who are RPG fans? Because uh, I have, I definitely have something to say, but I'll let you. I mean, you do roll dice to do checks. That's kind yeah. of the core of the game. Yeah. It's, 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 it's. It really is kind of a good fusion of RPG and traditional card games, or yeah, yeah, I guess traditional card games, card games is a good way to say it. But is it a RPG? Yes and no. I mean, you do level up your character, but it, at times it seems kind of inconsequential because if you die, your character's gone, and that's the end of it. Well, yeah, but that's RPG. In yeah, general, but yeah. To me, it's just it's really restrictive. I, I can see that people that like Pathfinder might just look, you know, overlook this and be like, hey. You know, it's great if I only have an hour or something like that. And that's kind of what, what brought me to it is I don't always have time to get, you know, a bunch of guys together and do RPG. Right. And, and it, there's a lot of investment there. This one gives you a, a very similar flavor, and it's done in an hour. You know, depending on who you play with. I mean, but the, the timer always stays the same. Right. It's so, always 30 cards. So it's always about an hour, you know, kind of thing. If you have somebody who takes a long time, whatever. But, the yeah, the the... I have, you know, 10, 12 characters to choose from, so that's not quite doing it for me. The imagination that goes in, not quite doing it. And you can't be like, well, gee, I'm going to I'm gonna look. You know, it's like that NPC is, is challenging me. Well, I'm going to use my perception. Can I do a perception check to see if I see a weakness in the armor? Right, you know, yeah, stuff you can't like that. do that. You can't really do that. But they do do a good job of incorporating it into the cards. It's just not one of those things that you feel ownership of it. Yeah. You're not like, hey, I have a great idea. Let's do this. You know, yeah, like, you're kind of restricted. Is on there what... light? Are there candles? You know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That sort you're of thing. You're not playing Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, yeah. So apart from that, I, I think that some RPGers that people are like, hey, you should check this out. It's just like RPG. You know, and like, no. Yeah, it's not just like it's RPG. More like video game RPG. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Because yeah. it is, you know, rather linear, but you can still, you know, take the liberties with action kind of thing a little right. bit. But uh, anyway, and then what about the card aspect of it? Uh, well, as far as art goes, I, no, I dig. Uh, I mean, the the playability. Oh, 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 oh playability. Card game. Yeah, no, I, I dig that. Uh, I I like it a lot. Um, I kind of. I, I wish that some of the cards that they had, they either had more of or not at all. Uh, some some cards are just kind of ridiculous, but for the most part, it's a great card game. Um, yeah, I, I would I would rank it right up there with uh, you know we play legendary often. I, I love playing legendary. I love playing this as far as card games go. I think this works. I think this is a great game. Yeah, I like it a lot too. I do have a little bit of resistance just because I, I don't know. I mean, it, it does definitely incorporate a lot of chance. Like when you're doing monsters, you have this big thick stack of monsters. Right. And you literally just take out, you know, maybe 10 out of this huge stack randomly. And some of them are, you know, really badass. Like, this guy's, you know, 14. He, you have to do a check, a 14 combat check. Right. And, um, you know, he might wound you right away. Or there might be, a, like, 
Like, I think the Enchanter is that the one that you can't hurt with melee. You have to use magic, magic or whatever. Anyway, there's there's a lot of monsters that can come out, and you're like, oh, shit. Like, that's worse than the villain, you know, kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and one of these uh, one of these locations didn't say that you can't use something with an item, or was that an, uh, an enemy? Oh, that was the Goblin, where you can't use an, an, a, a weapon to defeat him, right? So, yeah, yeah, there's stuff like that. There's conditions like that. So I appreciate that, because it's like, you could you could stumble upon, like, an ogre and be like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, like, we gotta, you know, team up or get the hell out of here yeah. and try again later. Uh, so I appreciate that aspect, but it also seems kind of cheap that way because it's like, oh fuck, you know, kind of thing. But I mean, that's 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 the men's the bricks. So I do appreciate that overall. It's just that for it took me a little while to warm up to the randomness of it because it's it's so random what's in the deck. But that also adds you know longevity to the game. Yeah. So overall, I appreciate it. The quality is there. I'm I'm gonna be a huge fan of this. I know I'm gonna probably buy everything they do, uh, and I'm having a lot of fun. I can't wait to get a group. You know, we we have a group doing descent, right. so we're we're spending a lot of time doing that. So we haven't had enough time to do another kind of game, but I think this might be next. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoy it. Uh, this this is one that uh, again, it only takes an hour. Um, so like descent will take all day if you want to play it. This one, it, each scenario is an hour, so it breaks it up really nice. Uh, you can just sit down, play with friends once or twice, uh, upgrade your character, and then just kind of pack it away and play it some other day. So yeah, and I guess. I guess we have a little bit of time that we can go over. Like, okay, so it looks like Lenny and uh, Miri have, have chosen to go in the same place. We're at the wooden bridge. So Lenny's going to go first. And oh, okay. we're going to just decide to explore. Ah, oh, I found an ally. All right, so... She's the sage. She has uh, a seven right. wisdom check. Right, so, so in order to acquire this character, and acquiring and combat works the same way. The only difference is the acquiring will actually tell you what to, to check for. Whereas if it just says combat, you have to only use either melee or strength in order to defeat it, unless it says otherwise. Um, so for, for this ally, Sage, uh, I need a check uh, of seven, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a wisdom check of seven or a charisma and diplomacy of or, of six, or diplomacy, I should say. Uh, and my wisdom is actually really high. I have a Charisma D sucks, but here, wisdom. Yeah, I have a D10 for my wisdom, but that's a seven. So what is my uh, charisma? Uh, my charisma is a D8, and I need a six on that. Well, I'm going to stick with my... Uh, my D10, because why not? And I'm going to roll, and if it's 7 or higher and it's a 10, I'm going to get this card. This card goes into my hand, and now instead of 15 cards, I have a 16th card, but I have uh, uh, five cards, I mean, uh, six cards in my hand. My hand limit's only five. I have to get rid of one. So do I keep the card that I just got? Let's see. Which charge is this card? Do I add one D6 to your non-combat intelligence or wisdom check? My intelligence and wisdom is actually pretty high, so I'm just going to discard that one. So that one at the end of the game is now going to be available to I, all the party, but right. him first, to respect your hand. So all the loot you gather, all the allies you gather, all the spells, whatever, you can choose, you know, respect your hand and then say, hey, I've got these left over that I'm not going to use. Can you right. use them? So that's great. That's really cool. You can also pass cards in the heat of battle if you're in the same location. I think one or two characters allows you to do it when you're not in the same location. Um, anyway, so then... If he doesn't have a Blessings of the Gods, he's, he's gonna... probably not going to go again. Right. So now it's my turn, so I'm going to flip the timer. And I'm going to stay here because there are, there are uh, no, there's no weapons in this, so why am I here? There's three allies, though. So, okay, there's an armor in here. So I'm going to try again. And I cheated earlier. You saw me. Oh, gee, it's the bandit. So so it's the bandit. Um, I have you know pretty kick-ass weapons right now, so I'm just going to use my long sword. And I'm not even going to add anything to it. Like, I can look at my card and I might be able to add something. But right now I get uh, melee plus two and I get a d12. So I get a d12 for this. Um, and all I need to do, I can reveal this, get a d8. And all I need to do is get an eight. And, oh, I only got four. So I actually failed this, which is crazy because it's six total. Totally failed that. So now, wow. now um, it, it hurts me for the difference. So I have a plus two, six, so I have uh, two difference, because he's worth eight. So I'm going to have to get rid of two of my cards. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my short sword and my long spear and keep my long sword. And that's how you get wounded. Sword. So anyway, and then this guy, since he succeeded, uh, he is going to be shuffled back in here. Right. And you so only do that know. with the henchman. When the villain comes out, you're going to take him and, I think we said this yeah. before, the blessings, and then randomize it. Right. And so that's it. I failed, but I do have a blessings of the gods, so I'm going to play that and explore again. Daring. And it's a Blessings, and I need to have Intelligence, Arcane, or Divine, so I do not have Arcane or Divine, so that kind of sucks for me. Uh, he can toss the uh, challenge to me as long as he attempts it first. So as if he attempts it and fails, then I can pitch in and say, okay, well, I'm going to help you out. 
So uh, he would roll probably intel. Uh, well, he could no, you can't roll divine. So you would re roll intelligence, and then I would try for yeah, probably divine. Yeah, generally get a d4 for intelligence. And so my divine. There's no is, way I can get this. Blah blah blah. My divine is a d10 plus one, so I'm gonna roll a d10 and add one to it, and I get it. So yay! Well, he gets it because he was the one who initiated. So that's uh that's I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, that's the game in a nutshell. One of one of the key things that you have to remember though in combat, and I said this before, but I really want to make sure you understand it, is when it says combat, you're looking for strength or melee. So my character can't use divine, which is what she's really strong at, in a combat because it doesn't work. Which is unfortunate because you know she's a she's a magician. You Why can actually use that towards spells though that also it's works. It's true. So. It's true. Anyway, so yeah, it does it does kind of scratch that itch. Um, and it has a lot of the randomness of dice rolls. You know, that's kind of a quintessential RPG kind of, you know, structure. Right. So so it does do a good enough job. I just I just don't think that it's like, oh, hey, you don't need to do, you know, RPG anymore. You can just play this. It, it's not quite that. But I don't think it's trying to be that. No, no. So anyway, it is very enjoyable. And I'm, I'm going to play the hell out of it. And I can't wait for more. So I'm going to be right already. there with you. So, so it is... Uh, available now and a lot of people are excited about it so go check it out i'm sure there'll be you know lots of playthroughs in the coming months so all right guys thanks for watching uh please subscribe to our youtube channel and follow our great playlist game lab's been a lot of fun yes it has and please leave comments we love comments and you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com that's right t-shirts a car game art print short stories and more and if you're on facebook so are we so find us and friend us and if i'm online i will chat with you we're also blogging you can find me fisk37.tumblr.com Blogging his characters, releasing character sheets, updates of my world that I've created for 10 plus years. Uh, take a look if you like it, uh, share it, and support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com, where I have short stories and poetry, so if you're interested, check that out. There you go. See you later. Yes. Ooh. I thought you had that. Yeah, it was a little too far away from me. I couldn't get it in my hand. Next up, the animated movie, Dante's Inferno. So I think I've come to the realization that I kind of wish I was Irish. Why? I mean, I know why. <laughs> but why? Well, I was listening. Uh, I have a, you like the way they talk. Yeah, I do. I, I actually really do. Not a tea at all. But I was listening to um, the Dropkick Murphys. Oh, that's blarney. And and I love the Dropkick Murphys. Uh, uh, in fact, one of the bars that I used to go to um, when I was younger uh, called called the uh, Cormix in um, New Brunswick. <clears throat> they played a lot of uh, punk music and a lot of uh, Dropkick Murphys. And one of the songs that they have is um, Going Out With Style. You know, it's all about when, when he dies, he wants to have this huge party and stuff. And I'm like, that's exactly the kind of ending that I want. You know, like, like I want to be on a pyre. I want to be placed there. I want to be like, douse me in like alcohol or, or gasoline. I don't care. Light me on fire and then spread I'm my I'm not ass. sure that's really an Irish thing. No, that's more Viking. You're right. <laughs> But the way that they did it, you know, and they were all happy. I'm just saying that not all Irishmen are, you know, bombastic. Yes, they like to drink, you know, no, a lot of them do. No, I, I'm pretty sure that all Irishmen are, are bombastic. That's a good word, no, yeah. No, not true at all. It was cool. I liked it. I, I well, you it. can make your, you know, your Pathfinder character Irish, and then when you die, we'll have a little celebration. My way to segue that in. <laughs> my, peg, my, my, path, my Pathfinder character is this little tiny druid. Her name is Linny, and her name is Linny. She's green and kind of leprechaunish. I guess. Way to, way to pull that so together. there you go. <laughs> All you need is a pot of gold and that's it. Yeah. The answer to your questions. <laughs> but yeah, so being Irish would be cool. And, you, and you'd get to drink Guinness all day and be alright with it. Yeah, I do like Guinness. I'm, I'm not that Irish though. I mean, yeah. Born and raised here. Aren't most Irish um, people Catholic? There's Catholic and Protestant. That's like the whole like war in Ireland. Oh, is it? I didn't know there was a, a religious war out there. Really? I did not. Northern Ireland. Never heard of it. Well, I, I've heard of it. I didn't know that it was separated because of. I just thought it was a geological thing. You know, like uh, like for us growing up where I did uh, in East Brunswick, which is this doesn't say much. Um, but East Brunswick was like, oh, I hate South River, you know, they're over there, you know, the river rats, whatever. I yeah, thought it was yeah, kind of no, like it's, that. It's a religious war that's gone into politics and everything else. It's... I didn't know that. I don't know much about, uh... They hate each other. I didn't know that. That's good now. Anyways, we sad, should... On that sad note, let's continue. Not fighter. <laughs> I didn't mean to, like, trouble your... I, I don't know, are you offended by that? I mean, you're, you're... I'm not offended, I'm just sad. 
sad because the Irish people are fighting against each other? Well, yeah, something. because that sort of thing, I, I don't think is worth civil war, but... You know, the politics, I go, so what are we talking about? I know. It's like the two things you're not supposed to talk about, religion and politics. It's just not. Well, it's not our religion. Wait, our, our, our politics, it's, it's theirs. No more. <laughs> okay.